Celtics Talk Podcast is presented by 24autogroup.com, 11 locations across New England. What's up, everybody? Welcome in another episode, Celtics Talk Podcast. Yes, finally a non-post-game version because we are here to set up Celtics versus Heat for like the hundredth time in 99 years because it's coming back to us here in the 2023 conference finals. The surprising heat rising from the play-in, earning the eighth seed and surging all the way to the finals, having vanquished uh, the conference finals, having vanquished uh, the Milwaukee Bucks and New York Knicks along the way. And here we go. Celtics found their way, cobbled their way through two rounds. Uh, I had to go call my buddy, Nick Ferdell of ESPN. He's going to give me the lowdown. No one knows Jimmy B- Butler better than Nick. And uh, so I just had to, I had to figure out like, is, is this just Jimmy willing this team or is there something more at play here? Like are the heat just, were they just slow playing us during the year? How did, how did they get this good when it mattered most? And how exactly can they force the Celtics to, uh, to work a little bit here? Cause on paper, it feels like the Celtics were in a really good spot, but we know how this goes. The Celtics sometimes can't get out of their own way. I don't suspect this is going to be a very fast series, but we're going to talk all about that. So let's get into it. Here's my chat with Nick Fernell. Well, we said it before we jumped on Nick Fernell of ESPN. Uh, I wasn't sure our paths would cross this year. <laughs> Certainly not with the team you started your your season with. <laughs> Although maybe, maybe I maybe I expected the, the potential to to crisscross. But here we are, yet again. Celtics Heat back in the Eastern Conference Finals. Forsberg and Fernell ride again. <laughs> how how did we get here? Jimmy Butler. <laughs> That's probably the safest answer. Jimmy Butler brought us together again. Because, I, Mr. Forsberg, I was there in that play-in <laughs> game against Atlanta. Mm-hmm. The Heat and the Hawks. And and at this point, it was like, I don't know, four weeks ago, five weeks ago. I mean, it was not that long ago. And they looked terrible, <laughs> the Heat did. And somehow, I mean, they were losing to the Bulls in the fourth quarter of the second play-in game, but Jimmy just went nuts. And when you're that good and you can raise the level of your game, as Celtics fans know full well, having watched what's gone on the last few years, anything is possible. But that's the answer. The answer is you and I both expected the Celtics to be here. Mm -hmm. Nobody expected the Heat to be here. Jimmy happened again, and here we are. Uh, the universe is is repaying uh, Celtics beat reporters because when we lost out on Miami <laughs> in round one, no we were doubt. despondent and we were like, never in our wildest dreams do we envision a, yeah. a situation where we just get it two months or you know a couple weeks later, two rounds later. Uh, but here we are. Look, you're you're the world's preeminent Jimmy Butler expert. D- does anything surprise you anymore? Because like from afar, as good as I know Jimmy is, I'm still like, look at that team. How are they in the Eastern Conference Finals again? Like, do you ever sit back and just marvel at what the man is able to do? I'm still shocked. Yeah. Not just not just for the last month or so, Chris, but the last few years. Mm. Because when Jimmy left Chicago, went to Minnesota with Tibbs for the reunion, he went, eh, I, I don't know if this is going to work. And then, as we remember, there were all those questions of, where is Jimmy actually going to fit where everybody is going to play with him and not get pissed off at him? <laughs> I always say that the Heat needed Jimmy as much as Jimmy needed the Heat. Mm. It's a marriage that has just worked. People roll their eyes at Heat culture and all that. It's legitimate down there. Those guys believe in it there, and they believe in Jimmy. And so uh, there are moments you still are like, what? What is he doing? You know? <laughs> But the craziest part of all of this, and there are a lot of layers for us to get into, but this Heat team just didn't be as good as the Heat team that was there a year ago when you and I were sitting in Miami after Game 7. Like, they don't have P.J. Tucker, who was huge for them Mm -hmm. defensively. They don't have Hero healthy, although I know he he wasn't healthy at the end of uh, that series last year, but he's still not healthy now. It remains to be seen if he'll play uh, in this series, but... They believe in Jimmy <laughs> and all these other guys around him, the Max Struces, mm-hmm. the Gabe Vincents. They have raised their own level because they think, all right, well, if we know we have that dude, then we know we always have a chance. 
And that's what's really continued to grow in time because it was the same thing last year. It was just, uh, well, you know, we've got some other pieces and uh, let's see what happens. But this team, Kevin Love, who, who got, <laughs> you know, kind of tossed by the Cavs mm-hmm. and, and they don't have Oladipo, he's hurt. There is no reason, as we sit here right now, no reason why the oh, Celtics no. aren't winning this series. But you followed it much closer <laughs> than I have. There was mm-hmm. no reason the, the Hawks should have gotten a couple of games in that series. There was absolutely no reason that the Sixers should have taken that thing to Game 7, especially with no Embiid in Game 1. But uh, the Celtics always find a way to make it more yes. difficult. But I would tell you that it is all set up for them. This is a Heat team that, okay, they've got momentum, but uh, they are not as good as they were a season ago. The The Bucks are gone. The Warriors are gone. This is ready-made, finally, for the Celtics with this group to go all the way. And that's why it was so frustrating after Game 5 against Philly when we're sitting there like, don't these idiots know that the red carpet has been rolled out for them, that they are the most talented team remaining, that – Everything you could have asked for had lined up, and yet they just sometimes can't get out of their own way, which is why, as as irrationally confident as I feel in this team heading into this series, I just told you, you're packing for at least six games. It may may be seven. You might have to make three trips to Boston for this one. So just buckle up because not only will the Celtics not get out of their own way, but for the first time, the other team will will put them in some bad spots, right? Like Spo is good enough. He's going to junk up the game. He's going to call these crazy zone defenses. And the Celtics just lose their mind whenever someone throws a a zone defense at them. They're like, wait, what? What do we do? You know, they forget they have Jason Tatum. They forget to like, you know, basic fundamentals of basketball. They're going to turn the ball over a thousand times in one of these games. And we're going to be like shaking our fists at this Celtics team. And yet, that's where I need you to help me with. Like, what is the roadmap for for Miami to to win four out of seven games in this series? Like, do they need... Two big Jimmy games and a Spo game and a Bam game, a Lowry. Like what? How? How, how can? How do they win? <laughs> I think the only way they win this series is if you and I are sitting there in Game Seven, and each game that they've won is somebody's game. Mm. <laughs> like so, two Jimmy games and oh man, Bam was unbelievable yeah. in Game Five. I mean, you know that's. That's the reality for Miami. Boston is deeper. They've got Tatum. They can switch on everything. And Mr. Forsberg, I think that is a huge part of this. Yeah. That that defense, when they want to actually play and they're locked in, is really, really good. We saw it at the end of that Phillies series. Mm -hmm. When they want to play and they switch all over the place, well, then there's not a lot of options for that other team. The thing that would give me some pause is Spolstra, and you mentioned it, He's just an awesome coach. Yeah. He's awesome. And the in-game adjustments that he's able to make on the fly are really impressive. And th- th- there's going to be the storylines, Bolster versus Missoula. Missoula's going through it for the first time. I-, I think there's something to that. I mean, there- there's no question that when you watch Missoula from a distance, while he has the respect of the room, that's very clear. Mm-hmm. There are too many moments still where the Celtics team, the focus is yeah. just – all over the place. And to me, as you watch a team, that that's on the coaching mm-hmm. staff. When you don't have guys locked in, ready to play, I mean, game five against the Sixers, what? <laughs> what, yeah. what in the world? So uh, they're all and, that, and, of- and remember, remember, Nick, that was coming off of game four where Missoula doesn't call the timeout <laughs> late, right. where Jalen and probably like the, the fact that they weren't locked in is, is baffling. And yet, Talk about learning from your mistakes. I felt like his ability to then have the courage to go to that double big lineup in game six was huge. And it was a moment for Joe, I feel like, because that was yeah. the first time oh, on, yeah. in the, on the playoff stage where he had to really kind of, okay, I'm, I'm, I know my players want this. Am I, because he's very stubborn sometimes in terms of like what he does, doesn't want to call timeouts, so like wants to ride with certain lineups. He went down to a seven man rotation, trotted out the, the double big and really saved that series from from slipping away when which would have been maddening which does bring up a good question like when you start looking at the heat can the Celtics stay double big would you stay with that group would you put Robert Williams and Al Horford on the floor or do you like do you need more spacing against Miami how 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 do you think Boston needs to attack I would stay team? I would stay with the group that got you to that mm. point I would I would ride the hot hand because Chris if 
if if you're not going with the momentum that you just built, what was mm-hmm. the uh, the point in in switching it up uh, to begin with? At least see what it goes with against the Heat. And if you have to change, sure. But I think there, you're always better served when you can move Bam out of the post. Now Bam's mm-hmm. one of the best defensive big men in the game, so he's going to find his way no matter what. But if you can move that anchor away a little bit, uh, then you can create some more space for everybody else. But uh, this is why when you're looking at this series, okay, let's just put Jimmy aside. You need, if you're the Heat going up against these Celtics and Horford and and the Time Lord and, and all these different layers into this, you've got to have Bam Adebayo playing at a huge level level yeah. every night. You've got to have Kevin Love giving you 15 or 20 solid minutes every night. Another guy we haven't even mentioned yet, Kyle Lowry, yeah. who has turned back the clock, especially <laughs> in that real. Knicks series. You're like, Kyle Lowry's draining threes from all over the place? Like, what, what's going on? So, I, uh, the truth be told, I don't really see the path. For Miami, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. what I would tell you, Chris, is I've watched them now too closely in the last few weeks to think, oh, well, it's just not going to yeah, happen. Exactly, like, it can. <laughs> I mean, if 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 Jimmy is the Jimmy that we've seen plenty of times, and Spolster is is pushing the buttons, and you've got Bam playing at an incredibly high level, it absolutely can happen. It's just such a uh, a a tough scenario to envision and i think if if you're a celtics fan and you listen to our conversation (laughs) the the heat had to be just hoping like hell that the sixers (laughs) would close that series Mm. because you put bam on joel and he's not going to stop him but he's going to be right right there with him and then you've got jimmy roaming all over the place and harden was really good in a couple games and he was awful in in several others that's just a better matchup for this miami group who beat them uh, last year boston poses a lot of different challenges and the scariest part uh, for the heat is that when you watch them uh, when jimmy wasn't going crazy in that buck series and you watch that nick series chris i just don't know where the offense is going to come yeah they don't have the ability to generate over and over again if you're again at least slowing down jimmy so that would be my worry. The Celtics can hit you on all fronts. Offensively, Tatum and Brown, they've got weapons all over the place. Defensively, you throw Marcus Smart. I mean, I'm sure he's going to get time on Jimmy. He's going to get time on everybody. But all these guys know exactly what to do. The difference to me in this series is Miami just struggling to get the offense going night after night. Yeah, and yet I, I just rewind to last year and all those games were – old school 90 to 87 games or whatever, you know, 90, 87 points for the losing team. You're just like, there's going to be nights where defense takes over. Although none of those games felt close until game seven last year, which is just a weird series. Right. It really, like I, I, I'd almost completely forgotten about it, but I do know uh, Kyle Lowry is going to make Celtics fans like lose their minds seven times per game. He's going to either hit ridiculous shots or he's going to stick that backside out and take someone out on a bad screen and, and like dirty the game up and, and just, Junk it up is like because that's what the, the, the Heat will do in general. They just yep. they're just so good at just frustrating the hell out of the other team. And then the Celtics start throwing the ball all over the gym. And so like turnovers for me are just a huge part of this series. We know how much it plagued them last year and straight into the finals. So there's all those little things. But if the Celtics just don't lose their mind and stay focused, I'm with you. Like this team is better offensively than it was a year ago. Like Tatum got whatever he wanted the other night, and there was nothing Philadelphia could do. And to be frank, like Miami just doesn't have that size outside of Bam. I'm not sure how you prevent Jason Tatum from getting wherever he wants to go out there. And some of it will come down to shot making. The Celtics will have nights where they're just not making threes and they've really struggled in those moments. Uh, and yet the Heat's inability to generate consistent offense might ease some of that. I'm, I still just like can't get too irrationally worked up. Like I know this is going to be wild. You mentioned Hero. Like the Celtics just went through this where we were told like this guy's not probably playing, and then Embiid showed up in Game Two. Is, it, do you think Hero's going to be out there at some point to uh, to wreak some havoc? It still doesn't seem like he's doing much right now. Yeah. But you and I have covered enough of these series to know that two weeks from now is a long time. <laughs> so I would I would figure at some point. Mm. Uh, we're going to get uh, 
Tyler Hero is starting to do more. He's starting to kind of feel his way through. But I don't think we're close to that point yet. I think we've got a little more time in between. He would be a an important cog in, in getting that offense going. Yeah. But, but Chris, the, the knock on Hero is he'll get you 20 and he'll give up 25. <laughs> so uh, what the, the Celtics uh, can exploit is if he's on the floor, they'll just – go after him because plenty of teams do. I, the other part to all of this that I think is important to to note is when you look at the way the Heat have played and the stages that they've been on together, what happened in that Nick series, they got into the garden in game one. And Mr. Forsberg, I know game seven was rocking in Boston. And yes, Jalen Brown Garden was not rocking for much of these playoffs. So well, right. the, Jalen Brown said what he said for a reason, because you mm-hmm. can hear it on TV. I mean, I'm watching from a distance going, it's not that loud in there. What, what's going on? But I'll tell you what was loud. Madison Square Garden in game one. <laughs> it's the heat. And they weren't swayed at all. And there's a reason why they, on top of having Jimmy and Spolster being in charge, this team's been there. They, they know what to do. So no matter how loud the garden may get in this series, I think that is a part of this. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jimmy just dropped uh, that game six performance in the same place a year ago. Yeah. They're not going to be swayed by the moment. You are going to have to go right through them. And the Celtics can. They're, they're just better on mm-hmm. paper, but that only means so much once you get into one of these. But that part is going to be interesting because – it can get so loud in there and it can sway so many teams. It's just not going to sway this team. Yeah. It's fascinating. Like I, I just, I'm, 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 I, I hope they don't rewind some tapes with the, our, our programming when we thought it was going to be Celtics heat in round one. I was like pretty bullish about like, this isn't the same heat team. They've been up and down all year and this, man, they made me eat my word. So. Uh, we'll see yeah, how this there's a goes. there's a Giannis meme of just like at the podium as he's answering the uh, <laughs> the the failure question yes. that they can just pop on your face at that point. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't want that. So. Uh... <laughs> With over 2,600 vehicles in stock, the brands you love, backed by the savings and service you can count on. Visit today or shop online at 24autogroup.com. Give me, give me a series prediction. What's, what do you think? It's got to go six or seven, right? Celtics and six. I, okay. they'll, they'll mess around. Miami will find a way to get a couple of games. In the end, Boston is just too deep. Mm-hmm. The, the offense can get hot behind one of uh, several different guys. But the defense to me is key. Because, Chris, I've watched this Heat team enough to know that there just are not a lot of other options. You're going to watch these games and you're going to go, okay, we know what Jimmy's going to do. And, bam, if he's rolling, can get hot in the paint. Unless Gabe Vincent or Max Struess or one of these guys from the outside is knocking down shots, there are not a lot of other places to turn. The reason why you and I aren't sitting here talking about a Knicks-Celtics Eastern Conference Finals is because the Knicks could not hit a shot yeah. to save their life. It's you knew what you were getting from Jalen Brunson, the rest of that team. I mean, they, they just could not hit anything from the outside. The Heat are tough as hell, but mm-hmm. I don't think they have – uh, the 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 firepower offensively that they're going to need to knock out a team that's as good as the Celtics. I'm riding with you. I, I'm you know tempted to go Celtics in seven, but I, just looking at it on paper, I can't get there. So I'm I'm going to go Celtics in six. They haven't been afraid to go down to South Beach, not the hardest place to play, but they will cough away a game at home at some point, and we'll be like Jesus, oh. here we go again. Yeah. If they lose, although, a, if they lose a home game, although I say that they, they lost <laughs> a home game to the Hawks, so yeah, right. And if they lose a home game to the Heat, <laughs> it's entirely possible. But I, I'm I'm still that I'm still going to look at you while mm. they're 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 losing that game and just shake my head like, are you serious? <laughs> what is going on here? So. Look. Uh, the way I look at it is it gives us more time to hang out together during this series. I love that. I do and that love is the that. most important aspect. Uh, thank you, basketball gods, not only for giving delivering me Miami in uh, the playoffs after I thought it was just not a possibility, 
uh, and uh, but also giving me Fernell down in South Beach. This is going to be great. I'm going to harass the hell out of you, and uh, I'll make it up to you with dinners along the way and late night Mexican adventures. And uh, I am I am really excited. But uh, the, this this just doesn't stop. It's just uh, what do you, who do you think comes out of the West um, before while I'm, while I'm throwing predictions at you? I still say Denver. A lot of people think I'm nuts with the way that LeBron and AD mm. have gotten that team rolling in LA, but. Chris, this is Jokic's moment. Mm -hmm. He's just been awesome. And he can forever put away the, oh, well, he's great, two-time MVP, but he can't get them all the way through. Yeah, It's, it's how, lined how, up. How are, how are those other MVPs doing? Two of them yeah, are uh, at home on their, uh, on their couch, what you know, Embiid. chilling. I mean, I expected that from Harden in those last couple of games, but Embiid in game yeah. seven, what in the... Wait till you see what 37-year-old Al Horford is capable of. He'll be out there jousting with Bam and bringing him out to the three-point Hey, line. I mean, you're talking to an Orlando boy here. So oh, that's right. I've seen Al Horford do this for <laughs> years and years and years, even at age 37. I'm not surprised, like, when... When you guys were in Philly, I think it was Philly, when somebody's like, hey, Al, you know, elite shooter. And, right. and you went, oh, well, Al's going to have a big game now. And lo and behold, <laughs> yep, you know, uh, it. there he is. So uh, it's still within him. He's a very proud, proud player. And if he is putting in that type of defensive effort, Chris, that's all they need. Mm -hmm. I mean, the offense, uh, that's a bonus. But if Al's knocking down those shots uh, and, and he's – in front of Bam, like he was in front of Joel, especially in certain moments in Philly. Uh, again, nobody should just say, "Ah, oh, well, now nah, the Heat don't have it. The Heat always have something for, uh, for uh, everybody. Something. But I, I would still say it's a much safer pick to go Celtics in six. Last thing, are, are the Magic winning the lottery tonight? Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. That's I need easy. your hometown team to be good at least oh one point gosh. in your professional I mean, career. I, I want so badly, not only <laughs> not only for us in this series, however long it may go, but I want you and I, I want you to get me a Forsberg special shirt. <laughs> I, want it, I want it to be like twins. I need a double X, mm -hmm. but I want to do some stand-ups down in Orlando – and when, when the Celtics come through and and Wimbanyama is down there and we can get ready for the Eastern Conference Finals for like the next three or four years, wow. I mean, it'll be it'll be Fun. quite the party. I, I hope amazing. that happens because they've just been completely irrelevant on right. the NBA scene for so long. But uh, that would be a hell of a basketball combination with yeah. Victor, Paulo Bancaro, Fultz is coming along. Franz Wagner has really upped yes. his game. If they get this big French dude that everybody says is awesome, <laughs> then, hey, everything I'm, is going to be in really good shape. I didn't notice it, but I, I got my baby. That's sort of my magic blue on for you today. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to manifest that for you. Bring back some pinstripes. All right. Uh, you have to worry about another Florida team for a little bit. So uh, uh, stay ready. I'm going to harass you throughout this thing. I can't wait, buddy. It'll be great to see you. And I look forward to uh, uh, capping off all these games in Miami with a burrito at 1.30. I mean, it's that's... It's going to be amazing. If, if anyone's out there wants to really get the full Celtics talk experience, you can come find us in the uh, outskirts, of, <laughs> outskirts of Miami. <laughs> all right, Nick yeah. Fernell, go do your thing. We'll see you up in Boston. You got it, buddy. I love it. So I, I was trying to think while we were talking to the Nick. I think the start of the year I called him. You know, he's been on the Nets beat for a while, and that had to be an adventure. Uh, and when the Celtics signed Blake Griffin right before training camp, I wanted the, the lowdown on, like, what did Blake have left? It's funny now listening back to that because, you know, Blake on court-wise pretty much lived up to what we thought, although he's had some good moments for this team. Uh, but I joked with Nick. I said, uh, I'm going to call you up again when Blake is does something crazy in, like, the Eastern Conference Finals. Now, I thought that was going to be against Milwaukee when he's matched up well with Giannis. How ironic that. Uh, to bring it full circle, that it's Nick's new team with the Heat. Uh, and uh, whether he can do it against maybe Bam, I don't know how much Blake Griffin we're going to see here. But uh, I will be interested. I, that's my sneaky way of thinking. Will Joe loosen the rotation a little bit? Does he keep going with those same seven that he rode at the end of the Sixers series? Does he go with the double big? It's going to be an interesting little chess match. I do think this could be a series with a, a, a little bit more role for shooters. I wouldn't be surprised to see more Grant Williams in this series. Maybe some sneaky Sam Hauser minutes in this series. Peyton Pritchard for like a change up at times. So 
Uh, I just think that uh, it's going to be really fun to watch how this chess match plays out between Joe Mazzula and Eric Spolstra. Uh, and these things are going to be coming super fast. Every other night, we got a game, 8.30. Make sure you're checking out our pregame coverage. Celtics Post Up is your pre-pregame show now. We're going to be starting 90 minutes before tip-off. So 7 o'clock every night, starting the hoops coverage. If you, if you Tune in even earlier and watch early edition, because I'm sure we're talking hoops there too. But uh, Celtics Post Up every night, 7 to 7.30, gets you ready. And then pregame live, 7.30 to 8.30, taking you up to tip-off of these games. Come back for halftime, all that stuff. And make sure, as always, you're subscribed, both here on the YouTube page, We'll catch you next time on the Celtics Talk Podcast.